Hey guys, um, today I decided to do a small video, nothing too fancy, no scope thing, pretty simple. Uh, just because I recently I got like quite a few questions uh, concerning like um, base mesh and that kind of stuff when making a character. So uh, a lot of people like are wondering if I actually do quite a bit of modeling in 3ds Max or my or whatever beforehand or uh, just. Um, everything is made in 3ds max so i decided to uh just shot a, a quick video showing uh exactly what i'm starting with when doing a character what is a base mesh what i don't use a base mesh at all or anything of that sort and quick uh i'm gonna answer quickly to a couple of uh, other questions i had and i apologize for my weird accent and i hope you understand so here i have uh ellie open so this is my lightest character and mostly on her, uh, what people have been asking uh, mostly is uh, about the backpack. Uh, how exactly did I start? Uh, did I have a base mesh or anything like that? So I decided to show you a bit uh, what I've been working on. So pretty simple. Here's the base mesh, uh, the the backpack <laughs> from uh, ZBrush. I'm going to show you the base mesh. So let's open. 3ds max so here's uh my 3ds max file so as you can see uh those are like actually the base mesh i start uh modeling heli from so as you can see pretty basic um those are actually a whole base mesh from old character that i just modify uh to whatever i want uh those are just like extruded so you see i don't actually uh really try to uh make it beautiful or anything like that like as long as i have a, a topology to start with um good to go same with like everything I don't have the shoes in here but I'll show you anyway um, so here's a very impressive backpack so that's actually what I started with so when people ask if I actually model anything no that that's pretty much what it is but uh, after a while since there's a lot of details and that um, little backpack I realized that I was missing some edge loop to uh, help me out a bit so I add some inside of ZBrush and I'm gonna show you how so if I actually go in the backpack um, and go to the lowest resolution you're gonna see that it's actually quite different from what you guys have seen in the 3ds max but it's not a different base mesh it's just uh, I decided to add loops inside of ZBrush so um, if you guys don't really know how to do it I'm gonna show you um, to do that you have to be in the lowest subdivision and have no layer so I just remove mine I go down and for example let's say I don't think I have enough topology here in the metal part so I'm gonna try to select that yeah here you go and let's say I just want to add here so oops I don't want it back have this those really beautiful little polygons and I'm just gonna go in the edge loop in the geometry panel and do edge loop thing and I'm gonna let it thing for a little while I hope it's not gonna be too long because it's gonna be awkward okay go go ZBrush oh, okay here we go so uh, by the way the I think that when you actually do that and you have like details in the higher high resolution like high division it's actually reprojecting uh, the details so sometimes you might have a little bit trouble so I tend to do that at the start or I just um, duplicate my mesh to be sure and like uh, reproject it if there's anything but that can cause some artifact so like as you see here now I have like this very useful hedge loop which is not very he useful right now but sometime like for here for example I yes I added to help me extrude but I actually added to to add more topology there because when I started doing the details I it was a bit like uh this is hard and why I had those one is actually because if you go here like this one is fake I think mostly like it's not I didn't really use that loop but you can see that this one here like with that one I really helped me pull the geometry out to really actually create the the little like border that you have in a uh, high res and I thought that just modeling it or sculpting it maybe like was not going to have like as great of a result so um 
so that's pretty much it. Another thing you might know, uh, this one I didn't use much, but it's the crease option. Most people know about it, but uh, the other day I encountered somebody that didn't know about it, and I was like, oh god, how did you, like, just uh, did everything before, like, knowing about crease? So, um, usually it's when you start, like, right now when I'm doing is is useless, but um, it's in the geometry panel. You just hide what you don't want, and when you do the crease button. It's in here, crease. Uh, you're going to actually create, it's a bit like, um, how do you call that, a support edge at max. So it's going to help you keep the shape, like for example, uh, like the border like of my shirt, or, uh, or like even like if you see the shoes, like I do those, like to keep like, you know, all that like very uh, nice art edge. So, um, for example, I think in some place I might have put it like under the bag, I think at first, like for example here, to keep it like like very tight when I'm going to subdivide it, subdivide it, and then I, I can just remove it later or just smooth it out or anything. But how do you do it? It's in the crease, and then uh, the crease tolerance it would be actually if I had a shape in it, like uh, that would be like another, like whatever. Uh, it would actually crease it too if I bring that down, but I'm not going to crease level. It's like how hard for how long, basically. Uh, it's maybe not the the best way to say it, but uh, like for example, if I put it a little bit lower, like to 12 or something, after a little while, it's gonna start smoothing up. At 15, it's gonna take a lot of subdivision, a lot of smoothing to actually remove it. So um, yeah, for example, a great use would be under the shoes. And so I'm just gonna go show you um, how I actually did the shoes. So here we go. Now the poly groups are a little bit uh, lost because uh, I went up and down and everything. But um, I'm gonna show you that base mesh. So as you can see, those are actually the base mesh from um, my the other character I did before. So um, it's pretty simple. I just modified it because the other one was like a sneaker, and that's more of a well, sneaker, running shoes maybe, and that's more like a Converse kind of uh, shoes, so it don't actually matter because I'm like re-sculpting it, like when I bring it up, it it didn't work, but you just move it around and um, act there's a lot of people that actually model like in different part, uh, which is, uh, oops, not a bad idea at, at all actually, like what I'm telling you there, it's my technique, but there's a lot of different one and mine is not better than anyone else or anything, it's just the way I did it. But uh, for example, some people would like just like do that part or like model that and max, and which is great too. Uh, it's just because I like to play around a lot and modify, and sometimes like I just like I'm I don't want to make it perfect and max and just add detail. I just want to sculpt it through. So um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can have more edge loop there. Like if I would need more uh, density here, I could have add like uh, what I was telling you before with uh, poly uh, not poly group, but edge loop here. For example, if I would miss some or in specific area, so um, the crease was to use here, and might have been used no, but here just to keep the hard edge and here too. But I smooth it up after a bit, but you can see some people like to model that too. Like this is not perfect, but some people like to model it in 3ds Max to really have that perfect thing. But I didn't want to go like. Uh, I'm not a big 3ds Max model or anything, so I decided to do like just right in ZBrush. So um, yeah, for uh, that I think it's pretty uh, straight to the point. For uh, the shoes here, um, like for the laces, uh, people have been asking to. This this way to do it uh, straight from ZBrush. I don't know how, but uh, I just like like you can see. I just like start with a plane. And then I just like do it and max with a like very low res that I export from ZBrush just to know where they actually go like, and um and then I just add a shell and then you can see it's creased too so it's not it doesn't lose the shape so much, but it's still a bit smoother. So uh, that's just how I did the lace, pretty simple. Those were made with alpha, uh, like handmade alpha and that too. I just made uh for that. Um. What about it? Like other question I've been asked, it's mostly about the hair and how do you um, place them around. So um, I'm gonna just show you. It's nothing 
very uh, complicated. Where are they? Okay, so I have one part of it. I'm just gonna remove the other one. It's gonna be quite ugly. Yeah, so pretty fancy stuff here. So you can see it's a different group, and then I have a subdivision here, but I'm just gonna delete it for you for one minute. So usually what I do is I just bring like a basic plane, like a, just a plane with uh, a number of subdivision that I think might be useful, like like that, but it was just a plane. Like. So I just bring one in and then I place it around and how do I place it around is using the transpose uh, tool and then the move brush. So for example, if I want to make a new one there, uh, if you were holding control here, you're going to duplicate it. But to do that, you have to have no subdivision level and to have everything mass load. Well, you know what I mean. So, for example, I would place that one and I'm like, oh, like I'm going to use the move brush, like just to bring it to wherever I want and the effect I want to give. So, this is pretty basic stuff. Like, uh, if I would like to bring, like, if it's usually a straight plane, I use way more of the transpose. Uh, transpose tool to really move it because uh, there's more like uh, maybe rotation to do but for now like once there's a couple of plays and stuff like that you can too at the end duplicate that part to the other side and do modification and then uh, after a lot of time and a lot of effort you get like um, something like that like it's still not perfect but I'm gonna use that as a base um, for my 3ds Mac ma mesh sorry uh, for the low res and then add texture and I'm gonna modify it because it's not gonna look great and like when the texture is on and I'm gonna try different stuff but for now it's great and I didn't want to actually sculpt uh, everything and then do the plane later so maybe it's not the best for presentation purpose but I guess it's not too bad uh, so I don't know if I had any more question that I can think of oh yeah like did somebody ask me the other day about pockets and usually I, I used to make them like straight in the mesh but uh, for that uh, in that situation I thought that I didn't have enough density and I could have had loops and stuff like that but then it's like oh uh, like it I didn't want to subdivide like my mesh anymore and add like two million loops there I still had a pretty basic base mesh I guess so uh, I just like I could have like just extracted that with a mask but what I did is just like a model of pretty basic shape like like that in max so it's perfect like it's symmetric and uh, it's not with my eyes and I'm trying to draw that and then when I had it on uh, in I mean um, I just use like that tool that's really old but it's called matchmaker and then when you just do it once like it's just gonna make that like right now I'm just destroying it but that the shape uh, is like following the other mesh so usually when I do it I just like put it far away a little bit and then you do it once now I'm destroying it a bit and then you just it's just gonna fit so you can like sometimes you still have to move it around a bit but uh like uh, transpose it and then move it about a bit if it's not perfect but that uh, pretty much how you do it um, for uh, other stuff I usually used to have a like just a brush to do the, um, the zipper but some guys uh, showed me about like the insert like zipper so it's pretty cool I changed uh, like this little thing there because I didn't like it but uh, it's still a pretty good uh, tool if you don't want to ha have to make it every time and uh, use the brush and have density problem and stuff like that uh, so last question I think I had but I'm not gonna do it right now because I uh, actually have a lot of trouble to do it myself but it's about the fold and stuff like that. People have been asking, uh, do we use specific brush or anything like that? Uh, yeah, well, specific brush. I don't make my own brush or like that, anything specific. I think the best tip is to start like as low as you can. So I, I would actually start like um, drawing some shape, like even as low as that, even if it's like just a mess right now. Uh, like that actually really really help uh, I use clay uh, I like to use clay build up when I start uh, just like um, shaping like making shapes uh, with like a, a round alpha instead of like the, the square one that comes with it and then you just like slowly like start like bringing the shape out like going in going out this and I like to move too because sometimes you just start like 
adding so much volume and then you go in certain angles and you're like, oh no, that doesn't fit at all. It's too like, oh, I don't like this shape or stuff like that. And uh, like there's the standard, there's sometimes the celery fold that I like to use, but it depends. It's more for the wrappery, I think. But maybe it's, I'm just not good at using it. I like the, the pinch too. Sometimes like you're like, oh, this is too big and I would like something more sharp. Just gonna sharp it up here. So it's like like you can see how sharp that is compared to the rest that I so that's pretty much what I'm using I like to use like uh, the trim that I make sometime just like when I want to clean some uh, some shape here I'm like I'm gonna like have more I'm gonna go eye so you can see more like more of a plane here and stuff like that like I'm gonna smooth that out so with a very high smooth but just stuff like that like it's L nothing very complicated or uh, like specific brush it's just a lot of time because sometimes for stuff like that I'm I don't like the harmony between the folds so I can remake them like 6,000 million times and I'm never happy but please don't be that picky it's it's a bit stupid <laughs> or maybe not I don't know but you just rem like uh, it's really good to have great reference to which I had for like this one because I had like the the amazing character from The Last of Us which I had like the really nice ZBrush to look at but it, it's just nice to like take some picture even sometimes for th those fold I had trouble and I I just like put my converse on and took some picture and then draw on them like to just like define the shape and know where I'm going with it so um yeah that's that's pretty pretty much uh, what I had to say. I can show you fast. Uh, just like I wanted to show you the bag. Um, like because this one I made very different for uh, the bag itself. Just for the base mesh because this one was way more modeled I think and Max. Uh, it could have been done differently too. It was maybe not the most efficient, but that's what I started with because maybe if I would have to redo it, I would like separate like the um, the strap. It just because then the real bag it was one piece, so I decided to do it that way. But actually, I could have just like the seam was there and it would have hidden that it was two different parts. But uh, just because like at some point, if I wanted more like uh, density and stuff like that, I would have to add topology or stuff like that where I could just divide those parts if uh, that was not attached with it but um have a little bit more control so this one it was before I actually learned how to use the like uh the zipper thing so i just use uh, an alpha well this the brush i don't remember what it's called but uh it's from it's on the internet pretty pretty well known i used to use it like that for uh the thing and uh yeah details like that those were actually modeled uh, in Max and then place with the move and transpose and uh, now uh, you could easily do that with like the um, how's that called the fiber mesh thing uh, I think that's how it's called I'm not sure anymore anyway uh, now I'm yeah I'm not gonna go too much into details because I'm not sure if I'm talking about if I know what I'm talking about so um yeah. Oh, and when I was talking earlier about the the shoes, it's exactly like that base mesh that I use, and completely you can see that this is not uh, like a converse at all. Like the other one, it's really different. This one was more fitted. For the, actually, it's not even the same base mesh. I think I actually used my low res base mesh, and that's an actually very old base mesh from another character. So I was saying, just lies to you guys I'm sorry so here we go uh, I hope it helped even a little bit anyone and I wish you a great one so bye bye